Oh, hello. Hello, hello. Okay, let's go. Oh, you are so much slower than you. I'm not that short. <laughs> we are about the same because we are about the same height. Sorry, guys. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Good evening, Susan. Hi, Debbie, Bobby, Cheryl. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome, everybody. And so just like that, another ho holiday done. Check Valentine's Day. Finish. And we hope you had a happy Valentine's Day. I mean, it was yesterday, but still. So my, my daughter came into my kitchen this morning and she's like, Mom, you're already making Easter cookies. I said, well, it's to give everybody time that if they see a project that they find interesting, to give you guys time to shop and to find the stuff that we're showing you. We can't really be making Easter cookies like the week of, it won't give you much time. So. Friday, right? Easter yeah. Friday, the, uh, what is it called? The Friday before Easter? It's a good Friday. Good Friday, yes. Hello. Hi, Cassie. So oh. this year, I think it's April 17th. So you have time to shop. I did add a supply list of coffee. Did you do your supply list? Did you? <laughs> oh, Karen, Jeeper, Maria, Jenny, Kathy, Susan. Hello, everybody. Hi, Camille. Hello, Pittsburgh. Been to Pittsburgh. Long so let's, let's just briefly talk about Friday. Friday, yes, guys. So today I actually released those of you who are um, on in my in my in Haniela's cookies cookie club on Patreon, <laughs> uh, you should have received a message. Uh, we're doing a mini class on Friday. It was announced in the beginning of the month. Oh, you did it black. I like that. And so um, we are doing uh, Easter chick cookies. And we released, I think you also released uh, templates. Um, it's pretty much the same design. And today I released a video with the prep that you need to do. Like we have to, you have to ice the cookie. So if you want to join us on Friday, you're more than welcome to join us. We'll be doing this design on Friday, February 18, usual time. So it and I think I'm going to open a Zoom account and get and get a Zoom number so that we can kind of whoever wants to join us, you know. Sally's already ready. Sally's ready. Yes, I know. I Sally sent me pictures of her beautifully prepared cookies. She's always on top of it. All right, so let's. I'm I'm going first today. Let's get decorating. All right, so I don't know if you guys saw my story, the little preview of today's project. So first thing, the supply list. It's um, that cutter there. If you look at the top uh, left, that bunny head. Amazon says they have only seven of that particular kit left. So that bunny head comes with a little foot and a tail. So if you want to check that out, it's a really cute um, cutter. And then if you're making, you don't need this particular bunny head for this project. You can work whatever, whatever bunny head you have, but if it's a pinata. And so to cut out the hole to receive your candy or whatever you're going to put inside, you want to have at least like, you know, a, a bit of a border. If you look at the picture at the top right, you see there's a bit of a perimeter left. You want to have a little bit of something there or else, you know, the cookie will be super fragile. So to make the shapes, I took out the oval and I'm just going to hide. Um, hold on a second. Let me hide that. So you can see the oval. I took it out and then I used a heart to trim it and then I put it back in the hole. So you can see there creates the bunny's um, face. And so here's my sketch on the left and you can see my finished cookie on the right. So I'm gonna walk you through that. Is my camera dance. There it is. Hello, Julie. Hello, Bari. I'm sure your cookies are beautiful. Yes, Terry. I think you are just too harsh on yourself. Hey, Debbie. Oh, Debbie might be joining us on Friday. Awesome. Jo I think that's jo jo Is that how you how do you say jo Joviana? Giovanna. Giovanna. Sorry, Giovanna. Did I, I'm sorry, I messed up your name. All right. So 
here we can see the cookie that will be the where the candy is so i don't have an, a spare back one but you're gluing this one on a full cookie and my cookies were kind of rounded so i attached them back to back and then i added a pink icing inside here and then this is not done yet but it's just to show you then it's three layers and then you have enough room in there to put candy and stuff okay and so i poured ice and malt inside the hole and i didn't have time to edit the video but you melt isomalt it's in the supply list and you pour and you see there and you get the the glass element and so you can see you use your your um um spray the shell you know, i the, did i did spray it seal it love and, the i love the <laughs> I love the hairstyle. This little swoop, yeah. Yes, very, uh, very okay. cute. So now you can see. So I've poured the sugar and then I stenciled the teeth on. I didn't ice the teeth because um, I wanted them nice and flat. Okay. So once you've got your, um, you see this one here. You could do it just with the uh, the hole if you didn't want to do the pinata. So once you've got the actual um, everything done, I outline the ears just so that my perimeter between, oh, you could fill it with jelly beans. You can fill it with anything you want, anything you want. I actually had bought carrot sprinkles. Do you, do you think the jelly beans will fit or do they have to double up on the... I think that if you get jelly bellies, the jelly bellies aren't that big. Okay. So maybe they'll fit. You can try it. I mean, you can, you know. And so, um, yeah, my pink icing here, I wanted the perimeter to stay sharp. So I did this white line and that helps to keep the perimeter between the bunny's fur color and the ears kind of like sharper so that it's less like kind of um, wet on wet. Look, it gives it more of a precise uh, perimeter line. And my pink is on the stiff side because I'm using the same icing for the nose and I wanted the nose to be extra puffy and so you can just agitate your icing shake the cookie when i say agitate your icing shake the cookie and that helps with the leveling my my camera's dark today better it's okay no it's fine maybe a little cold yeah that's that's better this is a watermelon the color, it's by um, America, and I thought it made a really nice pink. So the watermelon is much darker than this on the bottle, and you don't have to take the colors all the way to the color that's on the cap. You can add less food gel and just make pastel versions of the colors. But it's a nice pink, the watermelon. And so I used the same icing, I just watered some down to paint the inside of the head there. So that when you look through the window, it's pink inside the mouth. But mind you, it looks like you don't even see it because of the carrots. So yeah, I was saying I bought those carrot sprinkles, but I never did anything with them. And I thought I thought this was a perfect application to have the bunny's mouth full of carrots. Because we buy all kinds of stuff thinking, oh yeah, so nice. And then you do nothing with it. They actually do like carrots, right? Bunnies. Oh yeah, for sure. Have you seen a bunny with a carrot? I have. <laughs> you have a real bunny with a carrot? Well, I mean, carrots are uh, like really nice and crunchy, you know? So I think that they, they like stuff that's a bit on the hard side for their teeth to get worn down. So you, Sally is asking, so you poured your isomal from the back and left yes, the top the of back. the cookie flat on a mat. Front side down. That's exactly right, Sally. I flipped that the way, that, that way the gravity right you you get the more space for the well and also because I'm gonna show you in a second, I'm icing a bit on the sugar. So I need the sugar to be flush with the cookie because I'm icing on the sugar to hide that edge so i'm just going to outline now you see so i'm icing just a little bit on the inside of the cookie yeah. so i'm hiding the cookie edge 
here I'm icing on the on the isomalt and it hides the ugly edge and it gives it a really nice kind of like the mouth area is very uh, polished looking. Karen says that she experienced bleeding with a carrot can carrot sprinkles. Oh yeah, well this you, it wouldn't be a problem because that's an option, yes. They're inside, they're not touching, like they're not in wet icing. So it's a good way to maybe Excellent question. Hi Emily, can you use hard candies instead of isomalt? Well, um it won't be as I think like clear, you know. I've so, not I mean, I don't know. Can you get clear candy? If you can get clear candy, you you should be able to, but the only thing is like I find clear candy it um it really gets affected by humidity yeah even with the i feel like even with this with the um, black edible varnish it does affect it's affected by humidity it's cool so here you can see all right that's what it looks like so far like you can give it a go emily i mean it i mean it should it, i mean it should work it just it might get a little sticky so, um, thank you, Lily. Hi, thank Lily. You. Natal, hello. So now this has had time. This the other one. I wouldn't. You have to wait a little bit. So this one's had time to dry a bit, and now I'm just following the edge here that of the mouth. And you see, this is the curve from the heart cutter that I used to trim off the oval there to create this opening in the bunny's mouth. And I'm just adding two ovals to create the like cheeks on the little bunny. So because of the hole, the face does end up being a little bit higher than I normally would have put it, right? Because I need this space here. But I don't find that it looks bad. Like it's just a little bit different than like normally I think we would just tend oh, to put the face. I think it looks fine. Yeah, it looks fine, but I, I really, I think that we would just like naturally just put it lower, you know, more like it's quite at the top. Oh, his mouth is open, so he's smiling. So it's naturally your cheeks are being. I guess yes. Like, you smile. So here. Everybody's loving it. So you're just shaking it to get the icing to kind of self level. I love his teeth. I mean, that's my. I think that's my favorite. I love it. I love how you did that. The teeth are really nice. Just... So the teeth, after I stenciled a little square, I used my needle tool and I just kind of scratched. Mm -hmm. I think without it, it wouldn't just be the same. I think without it, it would kind of look like a little creepy, maybe. Well, it, it would look, it, yeah, it gives it really the look of teeth, right? So there he is now. Okay, so he's got his little poofy cheeks. Hi, Renee. Thanks Again, for joining us. You need to wait another time or else the, the nose will kind of melt. So you need to wait for those two white areas to crust over. This one here has. And now it's the same icing as the ears. And I'm adding just this kind of like little oval. And then I'm pulling with my needle right in the gap right here. You see? Mm hmm all right so there and then if you look at the face right here there's a point and right here there's a point so i'm putting my eyes there and they're not pearls because i needed to i didn't want to put the pearls because i wasn't sure how everything was going to line up and so you really have to know how the face is going to be if you're using pearls because it's going into the icing right and so I'm adding the eyes kind of after the fact. He's adorable. I it's almost cool. feel like it's a mister. We need to name him. Need to name him? Okay. Put us put, put our name suggestion. I mean, this is like it's like Mr. Bob. I don't know. So it's a 15 star tip. And you don't have to do this part, but I do like a little swoosh. Well, so you just filling in this gap and it doesn't matter if you're a bit in the gap because the icing is stiff and it'll hold. So I'm just going from here, I'm tucking it under 
and then I release the pressure when I know I want to end and it tapers it. And then he gets that little comb over, which I find really kind of like adds to the cuteness. Yes. So this, you want to let this dry inside. So I glued, like I said before, the back to back. And then I just buttered essentially some runny icing in the gap there. And then I'm just filling that with the little... Now this, you could also do it like if you don't have these, maybe orange uh, M&Ms if you have, right? To kind of like... Anything. You could put green uh, jimmies for grass. You could put... Right. Yes. Anything, anything. You could put nerds. Nerds are actually a good size. Yeah, those are good sizes. Andy, nerds are a nice size for this. And if you go to the store right now for Easter, they've got so many things, like especially in the United States, like you go to Walmart, the seasonal stuff, they have a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton. So, so you see, I've added not that much icing because when you add the finished final cookie, well, if there's a ton of icing to glue this together, everything's going to ooze out the edge. And so you don't want to add like a ton of icing. Then you're left with all this kind of like ugliness coming out. Okay. You look at the transparent, like how clear that is. Yeah. That's the isomal. Yeah. The candy, like college candy won't give you, or even sugar won't give you the clear. You see? And so he's got his mouth full of carrots. So, um, Karen says, too bad you've already used Buster because Buster Bunny would be adorable. <laughs> well, maybe you need to get Bunny, well, Bunny, Bunny uh, plush toy as you are. <laughs> I love so, it. So for packaging, I'm not going to put him in the bag yet because he's not dry, but it would be a gusset bag, I think, that would be ideal. So a gusset bag is, um, what did I use for glue? It was just royal icing. Is that what you were asking about for the cookie? Yes. So you see the gusset bag, it's different than the usual cookie bags. There's a bottom. So when you open it, you see because this cookie is so thick, the cookie and the bag here, you can see, look, the thickness. It's going to fit nicely in there. And then you can add, here, let me pull out. You can add like a, this bag is thicker than the cookie bag. So you might need to kind of like fold it under and you can get the tape. They have this really nice um, like tape now that's used in scrapbooking. I'm blanking out to the name. Do you guys remember the name? It's like decorative, you know, like it's like masking tape, but printed. You can get gingham. You can get all the washi tape. That's it. Washi tape. They sell it at Michael's and, and you can close your stuff with these pretty decorative uh, tapes. So that's it. That's the project for today. So again, it's a, a gift idea. So the last few times I've been talking about Mr. MC, of course, yes. <laughs> so like in the past few um, lives, I've been focusing on gift ideas, cookie gift ideas. And so I think this is a cute cookie gift idea. I think the kids would like that. You hide different things in his mouth. And you could make royal icing transfers. I've seen a few Asian uh, cookie artists. They make mini transfers and put like mini donuts, mini cupcakes, mini, mini whatever in there. How stable are the eyes? They're fine. They're piped on. I don't think the eyes are. What would be the problem is this little swoosh. Mm -hmm. And the ears normally, I wouldn't recommend they'd be fragile. But because they're three cookies thick, piped, I think they're pretty much like yeah. structurally secure. I would still like wrap it in the in bubble wrap, yes. you know, like obviously in a bag and a bubble wrap. But you know what I mean? Like it's much stronger now that it's three thick. Monty from Montreal. I like that. Yeah. Ah, I like that, Leanne. So what does isomal taste like? Have you tasted isomal? Yeah, I mean, it basically tastes like like, you know, like sugar, when you buy the candies, like a lollipop, for example, well, it's just like an essence that they put for the flavor. So it's basically that without any essence. So it's it's just very sweet. It, yeah, it's, it's sweet. It's a sugar substitute. Yeah, so I there's like... It was little lemony, the one I tried. I felt, I felt, I felt like it had like a citrus. Oh, yeah. 
This sugar. one is, is really just sugar. Sugar. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, yeah, sweet. So what did you do for the teeth? If you could uh, maybe re remind us. So I did film it all and I will post it as soon as it's edited. It's just a stencil. It's just a, a stenciled layer of icing, a thin spackling la layer of icing. <laughs> So that it's very flat and square looking, right? Because teeth are not so puffy. So I just spackled the icing and I, it became like when you spackle icing and you stencil in royal icing, the, the finish is a bit more matte. So it gave it a different look. It was more matte than the rest of the cookie is kind of shiny. Oh, I have to um, excuse myself. I forgot one thing for oh, my project. Right. I'll answer a couple of questions. So Sally, it's not wafer paper. The teeth are royal icing that I stenciled on top of the isomal. So again, if you guys want to see if you're just arriving here, are the cutters that I, hold on, let me move Sally's little message here. See the cutters, see it's a bunny head. I have the supply list in the coffee shop and I added the supply list to Patreon. And you can see there the bunny head, I cut the, head with an oval. I took that oval out and I trimmed the oval with a heart to create the opening for the mouth. And then I put it back in the hole and I baked it and it all kind of like became like a Franken cookie. And then the middle cookie is just the whole oval is out. And that's how I kind of created the layers to create the mouth opening. If you wanted, you could leave like the whole oval and just pour all isomalt and ice on top, but you're using more isomalt. It's not really fun to bite in it, especially if it's hidden under icing and you don't know it's there. I think it could cause a bit of a problem. But at least they see it and they can kind of like get ready for the bite. Can you put flavor in isomalt? I would assume, I would think so. You can color it. I know you can I wouldn't, color it. I wouldn't eat a lot of isomalt, folks, okay? So... Yeah, it's not. It's not like it is a uh, sugar substitute, and I think it's actually like you, diabetics, I think, can eat it. But one thing about ice small is that if you eat too much of it, it's also like a, you know, laxative. So I wouldn't like go and buy pounds and pounds of it because it's a sugar substitute and use it. Um, it's used in the cake and cookie world, and because it melts at a very high temperature like sugar, but it retains the clearness. It doesn't get, you know, sugar, when you when you put granulated sugar in a, in a pot and you start melting it, it starts melting, it's clear, 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 and then suddenly it turns amber and, you know, so that doesn't happen with isomalt. So it stays clear like this and you can add color to it, you can shape it and the clearness of it is very um, uh, popular because like, look at the effect on it. Like you can see the carrots clearly and it's just beautiful. And it's, yeah, it just, yeah. I so did have uh, here a few lives ago, I did show the, the product. So maybe one live we can maybe do like a little isomalt um, um, introduction. Yeah, it's it's not toxic. It's just, you know, like a lot of the decorative stuff, like you, you know, like a- I mean, a it is edible. Uh, we could we wouldn't be using products that are not edible. it is edible it is fully edible like i said but do your research on your research and look up how much isobalt can you actually consume before you can i mean everybody is different you may not feel anything you may be running to the bathroom the minute you you know you you lick the isomalt but just do your own research please oh far we said so sorry to hear about oh, your son yeah. i'm i'm glad to hear he's doing better that's pretty scary stuff I hope yes. you continue to improve. Charlotte, the spray is a steel. It's a shellac. So shellac is used in a lot of food things. And this is to block the, the air from the sugar. It causes fogging and, and it impacts the sugar. There was another question. Kathy was asking about royal icing transfers hand. Do you want to answer that one? When is it when you apply transfers, is it better to do dry on wet or dry wood to dry with royal icing? Well, it depends on the project, I would say. It really depends on the project. When you are doing dry on wet, meaning your transfer, like your tra like let's say I'm making a transfer, this is a transfer. So 
uh, if your transfer is dry and you're putting it on, let's say you're using light pink transfer and you're putting it on navy blue wet realizing that would be a no for me because the dark navy most likely is going because it's wet it's going to seep through the light pink um so you have to kind of see what colors you're using how big the transfer is if it's too big then it's better to do dry on wet i find dry on wet application because then like if, if you're a cookie, let's say you ice your cookie and it's not super, super level and your, your, your transfer is huge, you're putting it on, you're gonna have gaps. It, it won't be perfectly level. So you have to kind of see what works. Project for, by project. For, for the, it's, it's really just by the project. I personally love doing dry on bed because I feel like there is no, like the seam is literally, like it sinks in, it just creates a really nice Look, but it's not always possible. It's not always possible. And for small things, uh, for example, let's say you're trying to make uh, ahead of time, you want to make a bunny tail ahead of time, right? So you make all your bunny tails and you can just put that on after. So you would do dry on dry and that's that should be fine. Usually I do, but you have to make sure that the cookie the icing is dry or, you know, at least crust the dome. Don't like squeeze it in because you're going to break your icing if it's not fully dry and I use like a little shifting motion when I'm att attaching the transfers. Yeah. I I have remelted mine. What I do though when I do remelt it is I break it. This like I yes. smash it. Me too. Me too. It's break. actually I actually filmed it. I poured it in a I have it in a silicone cup and then as it, as it cools and it's it's a really great sound. It's like the you know the sound for the what's it called? The you know Sound. The, the, um, the stuff that's relaxing there that, uh, yeah. It's relaxing, yes. You can break it. So it's I don't know about the lollipops. I don't know. You guys are going to have to experiment. I have not done this. Oh, hard lolly. Oh, you mean the, um, when you make your own lollipops? Yes, mm -hmm. I think you can. I, I don't see why not. But the thing is, like, it's, it's a, it, Isomal, when you buy it already pre, uh, pre treated, it's very easy to use. You just put it in a microwave. It takes, I don't know, depending on the amount, I'm going to say 20 seconds, okay, a little longer maybe. If you're making lollipops from scratch, it's going to take you longer than 20 seconds or, or a minute, you know? So you have to, you know, like, I don't know how much time you have or how, how many you're making. And then obviously, I don't know if you can remelt the lot. I mean, I don't know how that works. Thank you, Jennifer. Yes, it is different. Um, super glossy icing for the stained glass cookies. Is it just glaze applied over the top? Usually people use the piping gel or even corn syrup to make it super shiny. And then again, you're coming in with that shellac to seal it. Yes, to seal it. Have you made multi-layered cookies like gingerbread deer that stands up? Like your centerpieces, Han. Yes. 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 Yes, I have. Yes. I guess. Yes. I guess that's what, yes. Yes, we have. And you have, I mean, we do 3D pieces, but also like this. Uh, for this, I used uh, uh, melted sugar for the glue. It worked really well. All right. So I still can find one of my tools, but that's okay. I'm just going to... I suppose you, you might be able to muscle through without it. Yeah, yeah, it will be fine. I mean, um, so today, last week, you guys. Okay, let me just bring up my. Okay, thank you. Okay. Let's see, maybe I can do without. All right. Last week, you guys have been, our week before, been asking about um, um, basket weave. So I'm just going to do a little demo about the basket weave with different piping tips. Now, these are the numbers of the piping tips I'm going to be using today. Now, 47, I think 47, that's the most common. <laughs> See, so, so um, yes. So, I guess it really depends, like, you know, like, they have to disclose the information that it, uh, it's, that's what it does to your body. But if it doesn't hurt, you know, if you don't have any problems that should be fine. Well, I so think maybe also is they're all have different ingredients, right? Yes. 
So this is 47. This is, I think, the most common basket weave piping tip. It has uh, teeth on one side and then it's flat on the other side. Okay, so I'm gonna show you. So basically, this is how it comes out. And can you uh, zoom in just so they can see it like more? Because it's very small. There. Okay. Perfect. So with the teeth. And without the teeth. Now, if you only have this piping tip and you want to make a smaller um, smaller line, thinner line, so what you can do, you can take a masking tip and you can literally tip your sealing tip. part of it. Yeah, yeah, part of it, and then use that, okay? So if that's the case, okay? Another tip I have here, it's number 14, which is a star tip. Oops. Sure. Ask your question, Mommy. Away. So this is a star tip, and you can also use this to make basket weave. So I will be using that today on my project. Now, another tip, this is a really nice tip to have, 44. This is a fine, fine, oops, what's going on? My floor is not. Not cooperating. This is a 44 and it's a it's like a ribbon. Yeah, it's like a belt. Yeah, um, it's like a belt. It's uh kind of it's a narrower version of a four. narrower version is, and it's also a bit um it's shallow, not as wide or deep. Mm -hmm. Now you can also use uh, believe it or not, you can also use a um, round tip to make basket weave kind of design, but that's like, it's more time consuming. I'm gonna show you with the, hopefully this will not press over. I guess I haven't really thought of put this through. I'm leaving this open here. My coupler is very stubborn here. Okay, let me just cover up these tips so they don't get... Hey, and this question for you, Mommy's asking, can, um, can she use corn syrup in uh, a, a Fresh made up from fresh egg whites. I don't see why not. Yes, you you can. I would. Um, I mean, don't use a lot of it. I, I assume you're trying to use it to eliminate the the hard bite when it dries of of realizing. Yes, you can. I think the PMA. I don't, I don't know, but they have different number system, the PME tips, but you have to check the, you Google, so usually you can get pictures and see. So you start with, a, with one, with this, with one line, right? And then. So this is called a basket weave. So it's to replicate exactly what, what the name you is. Want to make the, you want to start the next line. So you see, this is the thickness that you need to fit in here, in here, basically. So you want to start your next line so you can fit that line in. Oops. And then you come in here. And you have to fill this in. Okay, and then you repeat. Yes, I guess yes. I guess it does come out come out like a like a um, wicker. This is really about the cakes. And then and then you just continue. So ideal consistency for this particular well, project. You think, your icing needs to be thick. Your icing needs to be super thick because if it's not thick, it's going to spread and you won't get the results. Now I really like to use a star tip. Star tip, star tip is very, very um, forgiving. 
This is a number 14. You can also use larger tip, I suppose. Um, but you will end up using more icing if you're using a large star tip. So the process is the same. And again, you pipe the line across. Now I'm making it a big, long, you know, you can really like control how tight your design is. Now, if you need help, if you're piping on cookies, you can create a grid for yourself to kind of give you, you know, an idea where to pipe the next line. And what's really great about the start tip, if you make the gap between the lines too big, you can just squeeze the piping bag a little more and more icing will come out. Expand it. Yeah, you can, yes. Now, so what, uh, Debbie's asking, what would you combine two different ones together? Which two types look good together? Well, I would like, well, I would say the co combining around, like if, you, if you're doing texture, I wouldn't do two textures. Let's just say like, I wouldn't do this one and this one because this is a star tip and this has already like teeth on it. So I don't, I, I mean, personally, I wouldn't like it. I would rather do uh, around without the texture and then use the one that has texture. And the other thing is, Fill two piping bags so that you're not. No piping bag. Yeah, exactly. I have one because I wanted to save my icing because I uh, I have struggled with powdered sugar here. <laughs> well, you can you can uh, you can just do sections of it. Also, you don't have to do the whole thing. But like I said, if you make it longer, if you make the lines longer, you can you know um, you don't have to do as many. And I have also done this with a round tip. I remember, if I can remember, with a round tip, which it, it takes longer, but the effect is really nice. And I'll do a star. I'll use a star on a cookie. You could use 47 and do smooth vertically. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yes, absolutely. But, they like, but, I, but you do need two piping bags. So this is the round one, and this is number four. If you decide to do this with a round tip, option for a larger tip, because it will take forever <laughs> to do. There are nice, if you, let's say you have a lot of cookies and you want to go fast, there are stencils. You could yes, stencil the stencils, absolutely. Oops, I didn't make my line too, I didn't make it long enough. But you get the idea. You're a little bit um, off. Oh. So that's the round tip. You can really play with it. I made like three, three lines, so it was it's a bit bulkier. Otherwise, you have to really like calculate that your line that you're making is fairly thin. That's it. It depends on the project that you're working on. If you're cookie, you know, you can make your decision. And you're a bit also, again, a little bit. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. It just it zoomed in, so I can't see yeah. very well. Okay. That's what I'm here for. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Cheryl combines the colors. So she used vertical in one color and horizontal in another color. Oh, wow. That's, that's going to be amazing. That's going to look really amazing. All right, so you get the idea, okay? Now let's go on a cookie. 
Yes, the key is the consistency. So let's go on a cookie here. So I've got, this is a very popular and traditional, I would say, design for Easter. It's a classic. I call it, that's it. There's it's some a classic. classic. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's really evergreen, right? So for this one, I'm using buttercream. And I will have my buttercream recipe up really soon. I'm working on it still, so um, bear with me. This is a so let me put up your blog. So this is Han's um, soft cookie oh. recipe. Yes, and the buttercream that is crusting is also included in the recipe on the blog. But I'm doing an updated version, okay? And this is my soft cookie dough that I use to make these cookies. You can see they are slightly domed. We actually baked these on Friday. If you if you didn't watch the live, you can catch it on a replay on uh, Facebook or YouTube on both of our channels. We've been going live, uh, gosh, now is it going two on years. two years? When I mean, it's sad to say that we. But it marks the beginning of the pandemic, basically. Yeah. When we started, I think, in April, early April. So there's a lot of great content. If you guys want to look back, the replays, there's some old old videos, but Easter's Easter. So if you look back, you'll find some, some good stuff. I'm going to add some white for the highlight. For <gasps> What's wrong? Is it more icy? Yeah. No, this is buttercream. Uh-oh. Well, what happened? Thankfully, Jeremy. Is, oh, you didn't see my bag burst. Oh, no. <laughs> Thankfully, Jeremy is not here. <laughs> I wouldn't hear the end of it. No, I All right, I'm going to switch my piping bag. So I'm just going to spread oh, A little technical difficulty. That's the joys of life. So these are supposed to be kind of cloud, but I'm going to add sanding sugar to this. Just to so I'm more. just going to give a little tip for those of you that use royal uh, buttercream. I find that if your cookie is frozen, what happens is your icing gets like very chilled instantly because the cookie's frozen and it's a lot easier to smooth the icing. If you find that your icing, your buttercream sticks to your spatula, it's super easy to smooth because it's, it's the cookie's frozen. Have you ever tried that? Me, no. Yeah, it just like helps to make it less um, fluffy, you know? I love sending sugar. It's magical stuff. It's magic, yeah. It's not expensive. It's okay to bite into. Like, it's not hard. Yes. Shiny. And fully edible. This step, so that's great. So if you have little kids, they can help with this step. They yes. love playing with sending sugar. I like the idea of an assembly line for the kids. Were the two of you doing live classes or selling for your discharging the lives when you did? No. Well, we did. We didn't sell anything, right? Why are you asking, Bobby? Oh, you mean in person? Okay, no, we didn't do in person classes. We were just doing the videos. We never did in person classes. Well, Han did a little bit. I did. I did, I did a little bit, but not like uh, a lot. Like. Not traveling around and all no, that. No, 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 no. Local at a craft place, you know, nothing uh, crazy. Okay. Now I made a mistake. Now that that's a totally rookie mistake, but I often still use my tipless bag. So when you're working with stiff royal icing or buttercream, make sure that you use thick, thick piping okay. bags. Okay. Don't make the this mistake. Oh, okay. Yes, it is. I need it to is. Excuse myself. Maybe you can entertain. I it is glitter you can eat. Or, the thing yes, about the sanding yes. sugar is, if you're um, new to royal icing, the sanding sugar really helps to hide a shaky or a fat irregular line. It really um, helps to get your icing to to look perfect. 
we started doing the lives, Bobby, because of the pandemic, essentially. And so uh, things changed for so many people. And so Han and I were all so isolated and couldn't do much. So we started to do the lives and then um, we just stuck with it. It, it. it has helped our business of the online classes and it's created, um, I mean, people come every week to watch us and we sell our templates on the co in the coffee shop. And so this is basically how we, this, our job's not a hobby. So the lives have helped market I have to say, us. When I, when we started, like, I don't like to be on the camera. It's not my favorite thing. The anxiety kicks in every single time we go before, for me anyway. So, but because of it, you know, they say you should do more things that scare you. So basically I really had no choice because she was like, well, you have to do it. <laughs> you know. So, and you also, I mean, I don't know, like it's not easy because we don't really see you. We just, we, we're talking to ourselves basically. And it's a little weird, <laughs> but now we, you know, doing it for two years, it really, it helped me a lot personally to kind of be more comfortable in front of the camera and just not think about, oh, you know, I'm not really seeing anyone. Um, am, I am I crazy? I'm talking to myself. And that's the other thing. A lot of people do the lives alone, which is obviously perfectly fine, but this gives a little bit more of an exchange and a conversation. It makes it a little bit more, I think, natural. I feel like it's, you know, Okay. Hi, Joseph. Okay. <laughs> I forgot what the to... March kits are. I, I think it depends who you're signed up with. March, my March, my March kit, it's an Easter kit. It's an Easter kit. This month, this month we are doing, I think, oh, I think, I guess I forgot to release that in a, in a Patreon. I, I think I did release it in my uh, Facebook group. This month, uh, it's a cupcake cupcake design with the um, folded method, with the parchment fold, folded method, folding method. Really fun. We met in a cookie group, Flickr. I don't know if you know what Flickr is. It's a photo sharing. And so we met via a cookie group. Coffee shop here. Let me put the link up on the screen. So it's uh, only digital products there. Here's hands. That's the address, and um, it's digital downloads that we sell there. And then this is mine here. Or is this both of ours? Well, it's my handle is Montreal Confections. Her handle is Hanyelis, and it's the same on all platforms. So here I'll run it at the bottom. And her recipes, Han has everything on her blog. Oh, thank you, Leanne. So we are good. We are best friends. So we are very comfortable with each other. And if you hear us joking, we don't mean any harm. We are, you know, fine joking, right? Um, so this is not a cream, but the same thing you can do with royal icing. Okay. The only thing is uh, with royal icing, I would probably like if you're doing this with uh, like 15 second consistency, I would wait for it to crust before you do, do your basket beef, okay? Yes, Debbie, hit the like button. <laughs> what did you say, like button? <laughs> Yeah, it's a like button. Oh, like, okay. There is a, there is a you. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, Facebook comes don't up. Click anything. It's okay. <laughs> don't, 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 don't click anything. anything. <laughs> it's a link button. Well, somebody will come up with that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Funny. Well, this morning on the radio, they were talking about scientists are working on a shot or something to give people to make them fall in love with, with, with what exactly or well, they're saying applications. <laughs> so for certain applications they're saying let's say you've been married or you know you want to maintain your marriage but you've fallen out of love with your significant other well you can take this shot and fall back in love 
Well, just take or... that, I guess. I mean, that's going to be like all of dragged up people walking around. <laughs> really? Yeah, that's what they were talking about. Because they were saying, um, you know, like there's, um, you know, you can take a pill like Viagra. And so it's basically the concept, you know, but love, the love aspect of a relationship. So. Okay, now. All right. How much is it? I don't know. It's still in the trials. I don't know who's signing <laughs> up for that trial. That's crazy, I have to say. I'm doing the, the edge as well, but you see it's not very nice. I'm going to scrape some of that off. See, Susan heard about it as well. They were talking also about a pill or a shot to not love, which I think that if you're in pain from a breakup, you mean like to hate? Well, no, like let's say somebody love leaves it. you. Oh, I like that. And you're heartbroken. It's just to uh, love potion number nine. Yeah, that's a, that'll be the name. Anyway, it's to, so that you stop loving them if they've left you and you're heartbroken. Oh, like you, when you're heartbroken. Yeah. But then if you don't have any feel, like you have to have feelings. I agree. Like if you have to experience, um, not that I wish anyone, you know, heartbreak or anything or, you know. When but it's part of humanity. Like, but it's part of you. And then you kind of. It doesn't do you. I think you lose uh, empathy you now then like. Uh, if you well, you don't appreciate. Like you don't appreciate, yeah. you know. We'll become robots basically. Yeah. Like, hey, there's oh, uh, uh, there's a pill for everything, right? I'll take a pill for, uh, you know, that person hurt me today, so I'm gonna take a pill. Any volunteers? I don't know. They were the other thing they were talking about for that pill was arranged marriages. So you don't love the person, obviously. You're meeting them. You know that your parents pick them for you, and so you can take a pill to love these people that you're just meeting. So now you can end here and adjust your eggs uh, at the very top. I'm going to add, this is a basket. So you want to hold the basket. It should have a handle, right? So I'm going to do handle just by going, doing the, essentially a, this is a seashell, correct? Yeah, shell border, yes. No, not seashell, shell border. That's it, Susan. You are basically, uh, you see, when you're doing this, I'm kind of like tucking the, like, I'm not going like this. I'm going a little forward. You're building volume under it. It's um, a two-ended tool. Forward. You'll, you'll see it under boo-boo stick or two-ended tool that... Uh, this, this buttercream, it's going to crust. I mean, at this point, it's soft. But in several hours, it's going to crust and you'll be able to touch it. I'm going to leave this as is. If, if this was just uh, exposed, I would probably clean it up a little bit using the same border, but because I'm going to add grass, it's going to be hidden. So would you do this design in royal icing or no? Well, design, this design can be done in royal icing, but it is a lot of icing, I have to say. It's a bit, uh, you know, like, you see, it's a lot, I mean, a lot of royal icing and royal icing gets hard. Don't apologize, Olga. You know what I find? Like, it, I've seen it on a few occasions. Kids getting cookies like this and literally licking the whole cookie, licking all the icing off of the cookie, and then they chuck the cookie. Yes. <laughs> this is a grass tip. Don't be afraid of this tip, guys. It's a fun, fun tip to use. Just I'm giving a off. tip like the tip. What number is that tip? <laughs> It's a grass tip. Oh. It doesn't have a number? Um, I'm, I'm searching for it. Oh, yes, I'm sure. 
It's two, three, three, folks. A hard no, but it's crusting. Can you guess what I, oh, <laughs> I touched it, so that's good, I can fix it. I'm going to put some Easter eggs there, my candies. Do you have any left? I do, I do. Did you go I, back to the store? Not yet, but I'm considering it. <laughs> I've been uh, really like... Um, so happy to find some Easter candy here in Spain. So I bought like two or three bag, three uh, bags of everything. She basically and ruined who knows it how much I like. else. Yeah. So I like. Yeah, it's not really healthy to eat as much candy, but I do love it, and it's really good chocolate. But yesterday I bought excellent chocolate in a store. I will tell you all about it. Excellent. You will love it. Let me clean up my cupcakes. Yes. All right. So now to make the little flowers. I think you've seen this lot in last slide. This is just going to be super simple. Yeah, jelly beans would work. Oh yeah, absolutely. Jelly beans would be really nice. I actually have jelly jelly beans. So were you saying you'd uh, ship those? Jennifer's wondering if you could ship that. I will show you the cookie that is finished and it's dry. Here it is. And it's the buttercream that I used. Okay. So do you want me to smash it? I mean, I could, you could treat these actually. You could, you could treat these. I mean, you could bubble wrap and pack it. Does get, it does get, you need bubble wrap. It, got, it does get, um, um, it crusts pretty hard, I have to say. It's not like royal icing, but it does crust pretty hard, which is really nice. So you have uh, 45 seconds. I have 45 seconds. Oh, oh, you know what I mean. You don't have to. I'm just saying. Usually we try to keep it to an hour, guys. Like we're not, you know, it's not like anything else is coming on after. We're just, I'm just reminding her. We realize you guys maybe have something else going on and you don't want, you know a six hour cookie decorating show. <laughs> you think you could uh, you could handle six hours with me? Now, this is where I was looking for my tweezers because these pearls, and these are amazing. I think it's Karen who is going to brag. If you can get these, get these. These are soft pearls. You can actually eat those without breaking your teeth. So, Momi, it's a different buttercream that she made. She melts the butter. Her recipe is on her blog, or it's going to be on the blog, this particular it actually, recipe? It is, it is already on the blog, but the, the recipe I'm using, I, I added a little bit of butter, uh, solidified butter, to make it a bit softer. But the recipe is already on the blog. Pink tool. So the pink tool, it's the pink tool. Again, this is... Uh, one this is one end this is another end right so it has two ends and this tool comes in two different sizes if i can find my uh, here it is and also sweet sugar bell she has her own line of these these are really in in, in her line it comes in a set of three i do have them somewhere here maybe on friday i'll show them um it's really handy to have and they're not expensive no, they are not. It's really handy. It doesn't really matter if you are cake cookie decorating or not, but even cake decorator can um, get use out of it because you have to, let's say, pick up a little flower. You can scrape off a little icing without, you know. Any fine detail. Yes. So there. So this is, a, I would say, a classic design for Easter, Easter basket cookies with Easter chocolate eggs using buttercream. You can also use royal icing, like I said. Uh, but buttercream just comes, you know, I feel like it's nicer with the, with the basket leaf. It just... Very pretty. Up. So... I like the blue sun and sugar, too. So thanks, everybody. We hope you like that. Sorry for going over. 
Debbie's loving it. Kathy, and Bobby, Candice. Thanks, everybody, for sticking with us. And uh, Friday, reminder, on Friday, we are, we've listed all the supplies, given all the prep information. It's all in our Patreon groups, both Pan and mine. If you decide to use different colors, use different colors. Exactly. It's perfectly fine. Uh, we may also change the colors, you know, like it's, it's perfectly fine, but the consistencies are there. So you guys can join us on Friday and it should be. Yeah, for the, so it's a mini cookie decorating class on Friday. We're going to be, you know, having the class live. But the people that are in the group that want to prep and join us, you guys can decorate with us. All right. So that's it for today. Thanks so much for, for joining us. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye, everybody.